Let's just take a minute and worship the Lord tonight, Father. We ask that your presence fill this house, God. Fill our hearts, fill our lives, God. Every home, Lord God, that this recording should go into tonight, God. Fill each heart, oh God. Let your presence, oh God, be with us, Jesus. We long for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus.
sanctuary but can we just take this time now and let's just lift our hands to him Lord we bless you Lord we honor you Lord we adore you Lord we thank you we just want to be with you we just want to be with you father we thank you for all that you have done all that you're about to do all that you're doing already Father, we thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for parting Red Seas from in front of us. Thank you for moving mountains that were blocking us. Thank you for tearing down giants, Lord God, that were defying us. Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, for truly there is none like you in all the earth. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We bless you, Lord. We honor you and we adore you. In Jesus' name. 
What an awesome privilege to be. Well, I'm in the house of the Lord this afternoon and you are in your houses, but I believe next Sunday there will be a change that there will be people in the sanctuary. There are people in the sanctuary now. I, God bless them. Uh, but we're going to have more people in the sanctuary. So I want you to please, please prepare yourself to be back next Sunday night as we as we worship the Lord together, as we worship the Lord together. If there's anything about Sunday evenings that I remember as as a as a young person, I always remember that we we would want to almost book if we had to work, we would prefer it to be in the morning time because we knew that Sunday evening service was when all the believers, those who are filled with the Holy Ghost, those who wanted the Holy Ghost, those who are seeking after God will all come back together again. And that was a way from, yes, we pray that the Lord will bring in unsafe and our friends and our visitors, but we knew that Sunday night was when the believers came and we were able to let loose and worship God. And though we should be worshiping God in the morning service as well, but we will run the aisles and we will jump and we will skip and we will shout and not be worried about who's watching us because everyone who was in the house was a believer of the Lord. And the Lord always showed up in the evening services. And so once again, next Sunday evening, let's prepare ourselves, six o'clock, let's come on out. As our pastor had said that we're going to pray uh, for the first hour and then we're going to get into praise and worship and the word. And I believe it's going to be a great time in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, if this is your first time tuning in, God bless you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and to watch and to worship with us tonight. The praise team did an awesome, awesome job in setting the atmosphere. And I just believe that God is going to speak to us tonight. Uh, my name is Brother Mark Rowe. I'm one of the ministers here at APC, and I have the privilege, privilege of serving you this evening. Let's turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter number three. Galatians chapter number three. And we're going to be looking at verse number 22 to 29. I'm going to be reading from the NASB translation, but you could follow along in whichever translation that you have on your phone or your Bible that you have in front of you. But I am going to encourage you tonight to grab a pen and a paper, as I believe that there are some foundational things uh, which we're going to have to do tonight. Galatians chapter number three, verse 22 to 29 says this, but the scripture has shut up everyone under sin so that the promise of faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, being shut up to the faith which was later to be revealed. Verse 25 says, But now faith, now that faith has come, we are no longer under the tutor, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you were baptized into Christ, who clothed ourselves with Christ. There is neither Greek nor Jew. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male or female. For all, for you all, one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs to the promise. Now, for our theme for the year here at APC, it's always abounding. And one of my major prayers for this year to God is one that the apostles have has asked him in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 5. They said, Lord, increase our faith. And that's my prayer for the whole of 2023. This year is, Lord, increase my faith. So I want to stick with the theme of the year this year, always abounding, 
and I want to look at always abounding in faith. This is part one. But for our topic tonight, I want to use for a topic the beginning of faith. The beginning of faith. And Brother Andrew, if you keep playing like that, I'll talk like this through the whole night. So keep it up. All right. The beginning of faith. A lot of times when we look at faith, we jump to Hebrews chapter number 11 and we go to verse number one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And a lot of times we, 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 we jump and we get excited because you hear preachers talking about the now faith. Now faith. You need the now faith. But when studying the scriptures, when, when actually studying the scriptures, you then realize and you begin to understand that Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, is actually a letter. It's an epistle. And so there was no chapters. There was, there was no verses. It was a letter that was written to the Hebrew church. And so to understand what the writer was saying, many scholars think that it is Paul. Some think that it was Apollos. Uh, so it, it's really up in the air. But the writer of the Hebrews, Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 1, was really continuing his thought in chapter 10 of the book of Hebrews. So media team, I, I almost feel like pastors tonight. You have, I didn't give you this, these verses here, but Galatians chapter 3, verse 22 to 29. In order to understand what the Hebrew writer was really trying to convey. It's still about faith. It's it's still about the heroes of faith. But there's a reason why he said now faith. And so Galatians chapter number 3 verse 22 to 29 says, But the scripture, sorry, but remember the former days when after being enlightened, you endured great conflict and suffering. Now these were believers. And I I want us to understand that just because you're a believer does not mean that you're not going to go through heartaches and pains. Just because you're a believer does not mean that you're going to have a white picket fence and everything is going perfectly. You're going to go through some things. And as, as the time goes on, the Lord allows us to get together. We'll go through more and more. But verse 33 says, partly by being a public spectacle through reproach and tribulations and partly by becoming sharers of those who were so treated. For you showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted joyfully the seizures of your property. Houses were taken. These were believers. The houses were taken. Knowing that you have yourselves a better possession and a lasting one. A better possession and a lasting one. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence. I need you to underline that in your Bible. Do not throw away your confidence. Which has great reward. Your confidence has great reward. For you have need of endurance. So that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Verse 37 says, for yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous ones shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back my soul, I have no pleasure in him. He's saying, listen, though you're going through hard times, though you're going through times that are rough right now, don't back out. I don't know what you're going through this evening. I don't know what you're going through right now in this season of your life. But I'm here to tell you, God is saying, do not back out. Because he has no pleasure in the soul that does it. Verse 39 says, but we are not of those who shrink back into destruction. But those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. Our faith preserves us through all of this. And then he goes, now faith is the substance. 
So understand that the writer is saying that though you're going through hard times, though you're going through trials, go, though you're going through persecution, though you're going through all these things, I want you to be sure of one, one thing. Make sure your confidence in who is coming back does not waver. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And is the evidence of things not seen. The faith described here involves the most solid possible conviction. The God-given present assurance of a future reality. The evidence of things not seen is true faith is not based on factual evidence, but a divine assurance and is a gift of God. Martin Luther King says this, he says, faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace. So sure and certain that the believer would stake his life on it a thousand times. Tony Evans says to exercise faith is to have confidence and assurance about an expectation without visible proof that it will happen. It's seeing something that is not, but believing that it is. They did not see Christ. He had resurrected from this time. But they believed that he who is to come will come. They are talking about saving faith. One more quote. Charles Spurgeon, they called him the prince of preaching. Or the prince of preachers. Says this, my hope lives not because I'm a sinner but because I am a sinner for whom Christ died. My trust is not that I am holy, but that being unholy, he is my righteousness. My faith rests not upon what I am or shall be or feel or know, but in what Christ is, in what he has done, and in what he is now doing for me. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight about the importance or the necessity of faith. The importance and the necessity of faith. And in order for me to do that, what I'm going to have to do is tell you what happens if we do not have faith. In turn, you will see the importance of having faith. Number one, if we don't have faith, we cannot please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if I don't have faith, I can't please God. There's no ifs, there's no ands, there's no buts. Without it, I cannot please the one that I am serving. I can't please the one that I come Sunday after Sunday worshiping and glorifying God. I can't please the one that I say that I've given my life to. If I do not have faith, I cannot please God. It is impossible. To please him. So if you're trying to be a Christian and not have faith, you're going the wrong direction. If, if you're a Christian and you're not trying to grow in your faith, you are wasting your time. If you are a believer in Christ and you're not trying to grow in faith, you're wasting your time Sunday after Sunday. Wednesday after Wednesday, you're wasting your time. If we don't have faith, we cannot see God's righteousness. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For it is the righteousness of God is revealed from what? From faith to faith. There, there are levels in faith. As it is written, 
but the righteous man shall live by faith. I want you to understand tonight that if we do not have faith, there is no way that God can reveal his righteousness to us. We need faith. If we don't have faith, this is an important one. They're all important, but check this out. If you don't have faith, we cannot be saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And it's not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is saving faith. But you cannot be saved if you do not have faith. I don't know about you, but if it's impossible to please God without it, I think that warrants our attention to find out how do we develop this faith. If we don't have faith, we can't be justified. If we don't have faith, we can't be justified. Romans chapter 3, verse 28. Romans chapter 3, verse 28. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith. By faith. I hope you understand the necessity of faith tonight. Number five. If we don't have faith, we cannot receive healings, miracles, and forgiveness. Look at James chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. James chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. And watch, this is crazy because the Bible says, if anyone among you is sick, then he must call for the elders of the church. And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil, in the name of the Lord. Look at verse 15. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed any sins, watch the Bible says, the Bible says, they will be forgiven. Let me plug this in here. Yes, there are sicknesses because of sins in our lives. Some of us are sick because of the things that we have committed and have not yet found the altar of repentance. But could you imagine going to a church and asking the elders to pray and none of the elders had faith? You would leave here. You would leave the altar. You would leave your seat the same way you came. Because the prayer of faith must be offered. Number six, if we don't have faith, we can't overcome the world. If you do not have faith, you cannot overcome the world. First John chapter, chapter five, verse four. First John chapter five, verse four says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What's the answer? Our faith. You want to overcome Satan? You want to overcome temptations? You want to overcome everything that comes against you? You're going to have to build on your faith. I threw this one in media. I'm sorry again. But if you don't have faith, you cannot stop the onslaught of attacks from the enemy. You cannot stop the onslaught of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 says this. In addition to all, this is the armor of God. 
taking up the shield of faith, which with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Faith allows you to hold your ground and not allow the enemy to move you. The importance of faith, the necessity of faith. Without it, we can't please God. Without it, we can't see God's righteousness. Without it, we won't be saved. Without it, we're not justified. Without it, we won't see healings, miracles, and forgiveness. Without it, we won't overcome the world. Without it, we will not be able to stop the onslaught of the enemy's attacks. So in our text tonight, Paul shows us where faith is birthed or where it begins and shows us what state we were in. So back to Galatians chapter number three. There were three illustrations of our position before faith came. The first position, the first illustration that Paul uses is found in verse 22. But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin. That we were prisoners of sin. We were shut up under sin. Now on your screen there is going to be a picture of what the Greek word here is translated. The verb is translated. It means to enclose on all sides. Paul is portraying a mind, to mankind rather as hopeless and trapped in sin. Just like a school of fish are trapped in a net. That's how we are. That's how we were. That's how you are. I heard a preacher, I heard a preacher say uh, this week, and I'm like, Lord, forgive me if I've done this. But you know those scriptures you read where Jesus is, is doing miracles or Jesus is, is opening the way or Jesus is making the blind see? And, and, and you know, you may hear some people saying, you're Jesus, you're not Jesus in the text. You're the one that Jesus is helping. This was us. We were like the school of fish caught in that net of sin. No way out, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We were all in that net. Paul was saying that all people are sinners. And that is the express, the, the express teaching of Paul. That we've all come short. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. We have, we've all come short. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not one person that is in your life, that is in your church, that has never fallen to sin. We were all like this, like these fish, trapped by sin, confined, enclosed on all sides. The second illustration that he uses is found in verse number 23 of Galatians chapter 3. We were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody. Before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law. Paul here personifies the law as a jailer of the guilty. Condemned sinners, those who are in this prison, is in this prison because they are sinners. You were once a sinner. Or maybe you're still a sinner. We were sinners on death row, waiting for the judgment of hell to come. Because faith was not yet here. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. We were destined to die. 
It doesn't matter how good you look in your suit. It doesn't matter how good you look in your dress. It doesn't matter how nice your hat is or how good your shoes look. We were destined to die. The wages of sin is death. And we have all come short of the glory of God. And Paul is saying, we had a jailer standing in front of us, making sure that we did not escape. Making sure that we not go through the back door, making sure that he was right there at the entrance. So when judgment comes, we were going straight to a devil's hell. The third illustration that he uses is in verse number 24. The law was our guardian or our tutor. The Greek word here denotes a slave whose duty was to take care of the child until adulthood. The tutor escorted the child to and from school and watched over their behavior at home. Tutors were often strict disciplinarians, causing those under their care, watch this, to yearn for the day when they will be free from their tutor's custody. Paul was saying, we were under this and, and we were crying out, but we couldn't do nothing. But faith came. It's not important just to have faith. For everyone has a measure of faith. Brothers and sisters, let's not get it wrong. Listen to me. An unbeliever may have a sick child and may not believe in God, but in that moment puts all their trust in God and God will move because of faith. The question isn't even how much or how big your faith is. The question is, in whom or what are you placing your faith in? It is possible to misplace one's faith. Putting your faith in the wrong object can have eternal consequences. You have to watch where your faith is. Erwin Lutzer, he's an author, wrote a book on how can you be sure that you will spend eternity with God. Says this one little quote, faith is only as good as the object in which it is placed. Faith is only as good as the object in which it is placed. Paul to the church made this clear of who their faith came by and that was Jesus Christ. In verse 22 it says, by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. In verse 24, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. In verse 26 of Galatians 3, it says, For you are all sons through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul was not wavering on this truth. Faith was birthed when Jesus Christ, God manifested, came to redeem man. And it's throughout the whole New Testament that we see this. Throughout the whole New Testament, we see Paul writing in the epistles about where our faith ought to be. In Galatians chapter number 2, verse 16. Galatians 2, verse 16 says this. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by works. Brothers and sisters, no matter what you do, you won't be justified. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you think is right. Can, can, can I say this, Brother Andrew? It doesn't matter when we stand before God. Listen, if I miss church on purpose, and that day I stand before God, and he asks me, why did you miss 235 days of service? No matter what I say, I can't justify it before God. Justified by the works of the law. 
man is not justified through the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ so that we may be what? Justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law since by the works of the law of the flesh, of the law, sorry, no flesh. I want you to understand tonight that Paul saying your faith has to be put in Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says this. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Our faith has to be founded in Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15. Ephesians 1 verse 15. For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you, and your love for all the saints. One more scripture, Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. And may be found in him, who's him? In Christ, found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own, divert from the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. I want you to know tonight, your faith must be placed in Jesus Christ. There's no other way of pleasing God. Our prayers won't be answered unless our faith is in Jesus Christ. Our expectations will not be met unless it is placed in Jesus Christ. But with faith, there was an action. Verse 27 of Galatians chapter number three says this, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. To be baptized into Christ and to be clothed with Christ means you have identified with not only the person of Jesus Christ, but also the finished work of Christ. which is the overcoming of death, hell, and the grave. So yes, you can overcome the world and overcome the temptation and overcome all these different things if your faith is not only in Christ, but also in the works of Christ. you got to have faith that he has resurrected from the dead. You have to have faith that he's conquered it And he's sitting at the right hand of God. You you have to have faith to believe all these things. Our faith is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 6. My last scripture and we're closing. Romans chapter 6. Verse 3 to 5. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, Jesus, have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ has raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we might walk in the newness of life. For if we have become united with him or clothed with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Brothers and sisters, if there's anything that I need you to get tonight, that if the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please him, I think it is important for us to understand what faith is and how important it is for our salvation. And I'll close by saying this. 
as I'm studying faith and as I'm praying, Lord, increase my faith. I'm realizing that faith is the currency of heaven. Faith is the currency of heaven. That if God was to rapture us up for just one hour to show us heaven, those whose faith is in him will last the longest up there. Because faith is what God uses to do the miraculous on the earth. So as we go on, as the Lord allows us to keep meeting together, the birthing of faith, the beginning of faith, is when Christ came to the earth and resurrected on the third day, gave us the power to have faith in him. And as we go through the different lessons, we're going to understand that we're justified by faith alone, that we're saved by faith, that there's an audacity to faith in hopes that before the end of this year and as we're going through, our faith will be lifted, that we will go from faith to faith, believing that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Faith is the currency of heaven. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies and your grace. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that as we are here before you, that you would just have your way. I ask, Lord God Almighty, that as this is the beginning of the week, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we will be on a hunt so that our faith will grow and that we will see more of you. Lord, your word declares that without faith, it's impossible to please you. But because of what you've done and because of who you are, we know where to put our faith. We know how to anchor our faith in you to see you do great things. Have your way, I pray, Father. Lead God and direct. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless everyone. I pray that you have a fabulous week in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also remember, this Saturday also, if I'm correct, and I may not be, so I'm not going to announce it, but let's come on out for the family, the family day uh, seminar that's going to be happening as well. Nope, sorry, that's the week after. This Saturday is fasting and prayer, so please come on out Saturday at 11, 8, 9, 9 a.m., uh, let's come out and pray and fast before the Lord. It'll be held in the multi-purpose room. Remember, Winter Youth is this weekend coming up, Friday and Saturday. Come on and let's glorify the Lord. God bless you. Have a fabulous week. We love you in Jesus' name. We are a rising global church with a deep care for individuals and the needs of our community. Your generous financial support and gifts in kind help us extend needed help to families locally and globally. From food on tables, support to missionaries, and humanitarian relief. With more to build and more people to minister to and help in times of need, your giving will make the difference for them and for you. Here at APC, we understand that our community is our priority and God promises that he will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out his blessings on you. So on behalf of those you help, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for, for your, your continued, continued support. support. If you'd like to give to APC, you can do so at apcpickering.com forward slash give. Thank you and God bless you.